Welcome to SwitchCoin and my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at 3D retro styled platformer Frogun and this it's one I've been psyched for now for some time but can it stand up to the classics and will it be a must add to the library for genre fans? Well that's what I'm here to find out so hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. If you are thinking about picking up a frog gun then head to cornershop.gg for discounted eShop gift cards with instant email delivery you'll get 10% off at checkout using code CORNER. Story then and will be following Renata, a young girl and daughter to two adventurers. She often follows in their escapades but not this time, this one it's deemed too dangerous and she's left back at camp. Well it's been two days, no news, no communication, Renata is understandably worried so she grabs her frog gun and she's off to save them. The story has expected a couple of still images to open and close and there's some minor context along the way. We also then do have a sort of side story in a young man by the name of Jake who thinks you're after his treasure and will keep appearing from world to world. It's lighthearted stuff, it does its job. Gameplay then and what we have here is an extremely simplistic platformer. We have the frog gun and jump. That is two buttons in total. The frog gun it achieves many things but it's designed to be automatic whether that's sucking up an enemy and using them as ammo, pulling you towards an object or even pulling items around in this world. Starts relatively simple as well gameplay wise but I do want to give a warning immediately. Things get challenging with this one towards the end game whether that's lava locations or even beehives. It demands you to maximize its simplistic moveset and sadly that moveset is also my biggest issue with the game. The controls I would describe them as temperamental at best, it has auto lock for the gun which is designed to help but so often it leads to frustration as you can't quite pinpoint the target you need or it latches onto the incorrect item like think a wall it sends you flying towards it and boom insta death you fall to that ground it's going to be back then to the last checkpoints. With perseverance you will get there it's going to take time though and I would highly suggest here make strategic use of the aim ability as well. By the last few stages though I rarely felt like it was skill that really got me through rather than luck. One of the levels I actually died north of 30 times which I did not expect going into this one. The idea itself though it is great this gun does it all it allows enough variety that I was always curious to see what came next but it absolutely needs some fine tuning or at least worlds that are a bit more accommodating. You see all of these locations they are floating islands you fall off any of the edges it's going to be game over and that can be punishing with the simplest of mistakes. Yes there is checkpoints but I wouldn't call them particularly frequent. I think it definitely would have benefited from something a little more traditional and grounded in its kind of world areas. The platforming as well it can call for so much accuracy as well because Renata is pretty limited in her single jump ability and no matter what I did at times the auto aim was just slightly shifted off center from the target I wanted. What makes these insta deaths even more frustrating at times the checkpoints they are often placed before dialogue sequences that you will need to keep on skipping through there's no way to skip the entire thing. It's a game though that's had all of the emotions out of me that's for sure from the nostalgia of this style of platformer to absolute rage as I felt like I was going against the control scheme. The last couple of worlds took me a good few hours and I had to walk away on multiple occasions. Another annoyance then with the controls I found as well, yes the frog gun interacts with enemies and it's fun picking them up, firing them at each other, but eventually some enemies are too strong so you'll actually be pulled in towards them. In fact you'll use them often as mid-air platforms towards the end of the game for some particularly brutal moments. The problem I have though is the game gives no indication of what the reaction will be so every time I met a new enemy I basically had to go through trial and error and try to figure it out for myself. Now that sounds minor but you have an enemy on a ledge and it turns out you fly towards them that's nearly always going to be insta death or at least you're losing some of those lives. You start the game with three hearts you see before you hit the last checkpoint again. It can however be expanded upon with chests that are scattered around the overworld should you dedicate some time to the collectathon element of the game. 
basically the control scheme here, good idea, execution though needs some work, it just makes the experience more difficult than it needs to be and because of that this is not going to be one for young kids at all, it's going to prove absolutely frustrating. Basically the control scheme here, a good idea, the execution however it needs work, it just makes the experience incredibly difficult. This is not one for young kids at all or those that maybe have you know, a short temper, understandably it's going to prove way too frustrating. You mix that then with the camera as well and these worlds are pretty small, it leads to some incredibly awkward angles and clipping. And yeah, it is expected of the genre, do not get me wrong, but the level design in these areas, it didn't really do Froggen any favours. The positives though, when it does work, it actually feels really good and you see all of that potential shining through. Likewise, the levels, there's some creative designs in here, bouncing platforms, opportunities to chain together attacks, and there's a huge amount of collectibles, whether it's tokens, in-game currency, or schools. On completion of my first run, I sat at only around 30% completion because of all of these collectibles I still had to find. Boss encounters then are also a highlight, we will find one to cap off each world and they are the typical 3 or so hits to take down but they use the different abilities that Froggen has to great effect. A level design that should have been good as well but it really isn't, it's the races with Jake the boy who thinks you're after his treasure. It turns out these are basically a nightmare, for some reason you cannot touch him else you take damage, so it's a frustrating mix of standing behind him waiting for enough clearance to overtake and these pathways are often too small, either that or he's jumping in from the edge of the screen and hitting you with really little you can do. I have no idea why I can't touch him, it is such a strange idea, but it makes what should have been almost think a mini speedrun mode absolutely painful. Finally then I did see a number of bugs in the game, the first boss encounter they got stuck in the ice, fortunately though I could still attack them. There's a flying one then as well, I had to repeat this one maybe 10 times because they kept getting stuck on the edge of the wall and they wouldn't get back in sync with their animation, so basically I was softlocked into the game with no option but to quit out. There was also then a moment when a particular jump killed me randomly in midair, I had to keep on trying that over and over, and the game on occasion suffers from frame rate drops to around 20 frames per second, it's averaging for the remainder of the experience 30, but this game there's no question it absolutely should be locked. Options wise then outside of all of the collectibles and a few unlockable options, you can add a speedrun mode as well. Visually then I love it, the throwback is spot on here and along the way we get a simple collectible in hats. I rocked the Viking for my journey but I do think it's spot on from the idle animations to the simple enemy movement patterns. Though you will occasionally see enemies randomly teleport, I'll put that out there, but it seems that's when they first come onto screen they maybe have to get themselves back in sync. I think they absolutely delivered on the era though here and I particularly like the variety from world to world, though it's all pretty stereotypical. You know, think the lava location, the, the grassy fields, the, the caves, they're not things we haven't seen before but they are done well. We even then get a few filter options should you want think that CRT look. Audio then, keeping it quick, enemies and pickups have repetitive sounds, you would expect they do their job. Renata gets somewhat annoying with the sounds, uh, dialogue snippets over and over, you don't really need to hear the deaf one over and over again and trust me you will be. Uh, enemies same thing, they have a few audio cues as well. The winner though in audio, it's the soundtrack, it's got a chiptune like style, I absolutely loved it. It keeps things nice and varied throughout, it goes all over the place from the intense to the more fun and playerful and I really did enjoy it from beginning to end. Frog Gun then is an interesting one, opening the game, it's enjoyable enough, the green fields, it's kind of like a little bit more chill, but you can identify some of its quirks in the way the world's reacting to you, but also that auto target system, it can be turned on and off, definitely wouldn't suggest turning it off. But then the game continues to dial up the difficulty and for me, it was somewhat behind the flexibility the controls give you, you know, the controls just are not up to some of the things it's really asking you to do. Because of that it's going to prove incredibly challenging for many as it stands, I can only recommend this to those that are willing to push against it. Not only you know difficult scenarios but the control scheme that's often going to feel like almost luck had you overcoming a particular moment instead of your personal you know, skill level and growth. 
The funny thing is though, in the end, I felt accomplished reaching the end game. It's just lacking a fine tuning. You'll no doubt as well encounter a few bugs along this journey. With that in mind, I'm going with an average of five out of 10. It all works, just not necessarily as well as it should, but it's no doubt going to appeal to a very specific type of player out there that is somewhat willing to push themselves the very limit of what a control scheme can deliver. I ended up, as I said, finding the entertainment in the challenge. I just don't think it's going to be for everyone and perhaps for many, it'd be a good option to go for something that's a little bit more modern. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding onto that cash? Let me know in the comments down below. With that then, like it, subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.